Hello! Today I'll turn the main six from My Little Pony Equestria Girls into Lego mini dolls. Recomotion. Never in the history of Equestria have I ever been so excited about a dollify video. And who could be a better candidate for the first dollification than Twilight Sparkle? No one, that's who. All of the figures had to be heavily painted and this one was no exception. She got black shoes and some nice leg warmers, as well as the cutie mark. Ain't it magical? The shirt is more on the plain side, but nice nevertheless. Its highlight is the pink bow around the neck, because she knows that bow ties are cool. I also needed to paint her eyes and the hair. There was a lot of hair painting involved in the making of this video. Can you guess whose hairpiece I painted here? You can see it twirling on the left. As for the mini doll on the whole, I think it looks good. I'm especially happy with how the hair turned out. It's accurate and beautiful. But the process of the dollification is not done yet. She still gets accessories from me. An all you need to know about Dragon's book and piles and piles and piles of other books. Now she has something to do while she's waiting for her friends to be assembled. Fluttershy might be my favorite pony, because she reminds me of my daughter. She wears a pastel outfit that reflects her personality. There are two butterflies on her sand green skirt, the third one's coming, and I had an urge to give her a narrow pink line around the soles of her feet. It's barely visible, but it makes me happy, and that's important. I also used shiny paints wherever it was possible, again, just to make me happy. The shirt is as plain as it can be, only in white and without any details. I gave her the standard friend's blue-white face and a painted hairpiece. This one is a tiny bit harder to guess who I took it from, so here's a hint. The original was just too saturated for I don't want to be in the center of attention, Fluttershy. To complete the doll, I painted a Lego Friends butterfly hair accessory. Now her cutie mark is complete. I love the colors used for this dollification and I love the mini doll on the whole. She even turned out pretty accurately, if I may say so myself. As an accessory, I'll give her a carrot and a little bunny. This bunny represents a generic, no particular name pet for Fluttershy. Any similarity with Angel is purely coincidental. From the most quiet to the loudest member of the main six. Pinkie Pie in Equestria Girls got a lot of blue and purplish details, presumably to tone down the pinkness that is Pinkie. So, her boots are blue, with only a pink bow on them, and her shirt is almost pinkless, considering the main source material. Speaking of source material, how great is this cutie mark? Huh? I'm still not sure how I managed to paint it, but apparently I have. I might be an undiscovered painting genius. Wait, what's that? Dust and paint smudges? Oh, never mind then. I think the purple eyes go well with the rest of the outfit and the magenta hair ties it all together. I would have preferred a hairpiece with a tiny bit more puff to it, but I couldn't find an acceptable alternative. So this one it is. Guess the original hair owner. This one should be easy. The lack of pink skin and lots of blue details made her almost unrecognizable, but only almost. Luckily, the hair and the balloons are still a clear giveaway. A tool that every good party planner needs is a party cannon. You can tell it's a party cannon because it has balloons on its sides, just like the original. Put some confetti in it and we can party! Ow. Ah, that went well and not at all into my eye. Next up is Applejack. She's giving off a clear country vibe in her human-like form and I tried to recreate that. The boots have two apples on the sides 
and the skirt has some orange top stitching. The skirt is of a lighter color than the original, but I don't mind that as much as I would have minded painting it. The shirt is simple yet effective. I really like its design. It comes with a brown belt and an apple belt buckle for a completed cutie mark. A great relief for me was the fact I didn't have to paint the eyes nor the hair. The hairpiece features a braid, but I think it fits her. She borrowed it from a queen. The joy of non-painting was short-lived, for the hat was in the wrong color. I am aware that it's a bit on the fancy side and not as appropriate for Applejack, but that's the only hat with a mini pin that's close enough. So I used it. Ooh, I'll take that. I like this whole mini doll and I think it represents Applejack very well. My personal favorite are her boots. And I still cannot pronounce boots as I want to. She will get the biggest accessory, if you can call it that, an apple tree. And a crate for picking all those delicious apples. Off to work she goes! Another extremely hardworking girl is Rarity. Her outfit is simple and elegant, with shades of purple and blue. And her gorgeous hair. <sighs> It just gets stuck sometimes because of all the paint layers. Her boots are embellished with gems and her cutie mark are gems. No wonder Spike likes her. But then again, who wouldn't? I added a bit of shine to her shirt because I felt she would approve. I didn't forget her belt nor her left golden armband. I won't comment on the right one. She's the only one who gets makeup and the most gorgeous hairpiece ever, just painted in purple. The original contains hints on it as to whose it is, so this one should be easy to guess as well. I am in love with this fabulous mini doll. Granted, it's mostly because of the hair, but I don't see that as a problem. And to help her make other people fabulous as well, I made her a sewing machine. It's somewhat inspired by the Pony Rarity sewing machine and mostly by the Lego pieces I had in my collection. Now we just need to let her do what she does best and move on. From fabulous to awesome. Rainbow Dash has so many qualities I wish I had. Like doing sports, loving herself and pulling off rainbow colored hair. I love the socks peeking from under the boots the tights and the magenta white skirt. It's colorful and playful, but not too much. The same can be said for the torso piece as well. It's mostly blue and white, but the armbands and the cutie mark give it just the right amount of flash. Again, don't ask me how I managed to paint this, for I don't know. To get in more blue, I gave her blue eyes and painted the hair with more shades of blue than necessary. It took me ages to paint this. There was so much trial and error involved, I can't even. But the result is great, especially when observed from above. The original hairpiece was dark red, which didn't help me with the painting at all. But it will help you to identify its rightful owner. By the way, I'll put all of the answers in the description. I like to see color, especially in unexpected places and combinations. Rainbow Dash is a great example of that and I think it translated well into the mini doll form. For her accessory, I thought she should get a guitar. But which one should I choose? Hmm, this one seems close enough. So we'll let her be awesome as she wanna be. With all of the girls dollified, I can now take group photos. You are not done. There's an important Equestria girl missing. Relax. I didn't forget Sunset Shimmer. I decided she should get a whole video of her own. <gasps> now back to the photos. I wanted to see how my mini dolls compare to the originals and just make some for fun. <sighs> I waited so long to make some of these. Pinky and the brain. Just Jack, Flutter Guy, Rainbow Crash, Purple Hair with a Burgundy Skirt, ah! 
all been traveling through time using science, but it appears it can also be done using a spell. Who knew? Bye-bye.